Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Ryan. How are you? I am very well, thank you. How are you? Brilliant, thank you. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, I know it's been a while because you booked it ages ago, but I'm glad you showed up because some people after a while decide, oh no, it's taken too long. I'm not coming again because you do some amazing stuff that I'm really interested in. Um, but before we go there, um, I first of all would like you to share with us a little bit about you. So where were you born? Have you moved around? You know, tell us about your education, good, bad or indifferent, your first job, any career. And then, of mm. course, how you got into what you're doing today. So over to you, Ryan. Amazing. Well, firstly, let me say thank you to you for actually letting me come on the show. I think if, uh, yeah, if I book something, I usually always turn up, even if it's a long time away. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm from Lincoln. I was born in Lincoln in the United Kingdom, and I absolutely love it here. It's um, It's been described as like a bit of an island economy because we are surrounded by farmers fields and farmers that has mm. kept a lot of people away from Lincoln because they've always thought it was like a bolt hole in the middle of nowhere. But what that has meant is in this city, everybody has had to work with everybody. So you can get to the people that you need to, which is really, really good. And also if you grew up in the city, nine out of 10 times, your friends are, now working in institutions or places that you want to talk to or etc or their parents do so they know of you so that's great i yeah. did I did move away uh, for university. I went to Sheffield Hallam to study physiotherapy, which is actually my second time at university. Uh, very strangely, when I was 18, I had a car accident and I was studying business at Lincoln University because I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. And I have always made money. Even as a kid, I've bought and sold. I've done things like, so a kid came into school in secondary school and he said, oh, I've got this list of PlayStation games. I want to buy a guitar, so I'm going to sell all of my PlayStation games off. And I just said to him, you know, he had like £5 for this one, £8 for this one. I said, give me a deal for the lot. I'll bring the money into school tomorrow. I'll buy every single game off you. How much is the guitar? Like, what do you need? So we negotiated the price. And yeah. then I controlled the supply of when those games came out. So I sold them off individually at various different times. Um, yeah. went home and said to my dad, dad, I need to borrow X amount of money. And he was like, okay, what's it for? Told him he laughed. And that was actually when my first job was because my dad owned a window cleaning company. And he said to me at 13 years old, he woke me up. Imagine, imagine this scenario, right? You mm. go into a teenager's bedroom, a teenager's bedroom, 13, you wake mm. them up on a Saturday morning at six o'clock and tell them that they're going to work with you because they're tall enough to reach the windows. <laughs> so, yeah, my, I know, my dad dragged me out of bed, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me, instilled this work ethic in me that I, I still have to this day, uh, mm. and lots of other lessons looking back now where I think that, you know, my dad is the hardest working man, and he is my hero. He's the hardest working man I've ever known, but he's a grafter, where I actually think, no disrespect to him, that I work smarter than him. I look at opportunities mm. to scale. And that, mm. that's been proven because just to sort of tie a, knot, a ribbon in all of this, mm. when I went away to university, I le so I left Lincoln because I absolutely hated the, I hated business studies. It was boring. It was so theory-based. It was rubbish. And I was like, I can just get out there and do this. Yeah. And strangely enough the university actually now have me back as a guest lecturer every year to talk to the business and marketing students go I'm figure not surprised I'm it's not surprised. crazy so then I left university and I just was looking for something to do so I came across well do you know what I've always been fascinated by the human body and I've always been confident and I've always been outgoing and I've always loved people and yeah from the car accident that I had that was the real incident that made me leave university I had a physiotherapist and I thought 
wow, she's wicked. What a life she's got. Like she sees a different person every single day. She gets to chat to them, find out about their life and help them. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I'm going to do that because I love the body and I love people. So I went away, Sheffield Hallam, to do, you know, to do physio. And then in my final year, my dad got ill and I stepped in and ran his company. And I took that company into an absolute beast of a company. I looked at places to scale it. My dad just wanted to buy a brand new Ford Focus every three years. That was his dream. He has changed that now and now he buys an MG, but (laughs) that was his goal. I stepped in, turned that company into an absolute monster and then realized, wow, I actually love this. And then I created my own company called Bet Green and started trading on Betfair Exchange. And then I built a membership around that because people and this was this is a key thing for me you can give people all of the information in the world they're probably not going to do anything with it if you can yeah. help if you can do it for them you've got a solid business and that's what bet green was i was trading on betfair betfair were telling people that i was a good trader i was one of their top traders people were coming to me saying can you please do the work for me so that's when i created my first membership it was 15 pound a month and it was the world's worst website and everything was wrong with everything i did i made every mistake that you could imagine and i mm. just added people to a daily email list and i sent you the research and the trades that i was doing then what happened was so, th- so can i just ask you a quick question yeah, yeah of course you can bet betfair is what a trading company is it Stock yeah, so, uh, no, so Betfair is a gambling company. So it's a sports exchange. Ah. But what's different with Betfair is it's not a traditional bookmaker. So they, you aren't taking Betfair's money. You are matched up with other people. So effectively, it's like the way I describe it is it's like investing in sports teams and athletes instead of investing in companies. So I can say things like, I think Man City are going to win the Premier League. Somebody else can say to me, Man City aren't going to win the Premier League. I go, I bet you a tenner that they do. And they go, I bet you a tenner that they don't. And then right. we are matched. That's what Betfair does. But what uh, I, it's great, isn't it? I spotted, I mean, you tell like eight, eight to 12 year old Ryan, you're going to get paid money to watch sport. He would snap your hand off. I spotted that the market was moving and I could use my, use my analytical brain to go, well, why is that happening? And then find out the reason why I thought it was happening. And then I could get in and out and trade that. Turns out there's quite a lot of people who also want to make money from sport. And then yeah. Betfair, Bet Green, and then Betfair Trading Community, which I still hold to this day, was built. And it just became this huge community, this huge SaaS company. And I ended up just loving it. I ended up really finding what I, what just, I had a business partner who always used to say, you need to find what juices you. And what juices me is this, is podcasting, is creating videos for YouTube, is writing sales emails, is digital marketing. And then I built a team around me that enabled me to do what juices me. Yeah. And it's been an incredible journey. It's been the best thing I've ever done. And it's then been topped off by the fact that I've got a little girl and I get to spend a lot of time with her. And I spent six weeks with my wife and my daughter when she was born with no work, no checking emails, nothing. My team handled everything. And yeah, I think that's probably the best place to end the sort of sum up of my life, really. (laughs) (laughs) What? Okay, lots of questions came up to my in, into my head. Just explain for our listeners, in case they don't know what a SaaS company is. Mm-hmm. So it's it's literally just a software as a service. So you probably all subscribe to some kind of software as a service, whether that's like Google for your business, or you use Zapier, or you know you use even Spotify is, is software. Um, yeah. So that's how the business was built. There's two elements of it. There's a software element and then there's a community element. So I've had to learn a lot of different skills along the way to get to this point. Brilliant. So just so that I'm 100% clear, you went from university <laughs> to running your dad's business. Yep. Um, apart from 
the 13 year old job that you had, but you, you went to run your dad's business and then moved into other areas. So my question is what happened to your dad's business? So that's a good one. My dad came back, but he got back to full hell. Never forget it. He had a board where he used to have the round of the windows on, which was like one big board. And I plastered the whole room with these boards because that's how big it got. And he literally sold it in half. He split it in half and sold it the day he came back. He said, this is way too big. I've sold it. He kept, he kept me on. He basically said to me, uh, I'm going to pay you a base salary, just like, just deal with what you need to deal with in the company because it was very domestic. So dad did a lot of like houses, houses were his bread and butter. I do that house. I do like he'd dominate streets. That's, that was always his goal. And what I found was a few of the customers were saying things like, oh, do you actually do commercial? Because our office needs doing and schools and different bits. And we made so much money and they were all in one place. Like we could do a school in an hour and a half and get paid 300 pounds. Mm. And it's all in one place. So some of the contracts like that, that I got, he said, you keep them, you do them. I'll pay your uh, income, go and do what you want to do. It's yeah. said, as long as you get that like minimum work done, just go and do what you want to do. So I worked in with my dad for a couple of hours every day. And then I had all this free time to go and focus on my own projects ah uh, okay and is that business still going that business is still going my dad will not retire he i don't think he wants <laughs> i don't think he wants to spend every day with my mum. you know i think that's what it is he um <laughs> yeah it's still it's still going he's in his like mid 60s now and he will not stop he still gets up every morning goes out and does the windows it's crazy that is brilliant yeah that will be you later in life too ryan Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not out in the cold, though, because my days have been. No, out no, cold you'll be in front of your computer. I no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is my happy place. <laughs> yeah. OK, so you literally then didn't work for anybody. No other regular company. Mm-mm. Only when I was 16. A... Pardon? Only when I was 16. I worked 16 to like I worked 16 to 21 when I, I got a normal job, I was at Asda pushing trolleys and working on the checkouts, but I still work with my dad. And, and right. you know what? Until very recently, probably just before, probably 2019, I still worked as a Saturday lad with my dad because I loved it. And we didn't even work. Right? Nine out of 10 times, he'd pick me up, we'd sit in the car, we'd go through McDonald's, have a coffee, couple of hours in the morning, it dropped me off home. I said to him, dad, we don't actually do any work. Should we just, <laughs> instead of doing this, should we just go get a coffee on Saturday mornings? He was like, yeah, yeah. that's probably best in it, Ryan. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I literally, I worked in Asda 16 to 21. I worked Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And then Saturdays I worked with my dad. And that was my first sort of proper job, but I haven't got you really okay. had a proper job other than that other than that that's quite unusual and yeah how liberating fantastic mm. uh, and then when how did the idea of betfair come about <laughs> yeah so that happened at university i was i had a massive gap on a monday like between lectures, it's like five hours. And there was a guy who I was friendly with and he said, oh, I'm going to go to the bookies and play the roulette machine. And I was like, you are an idiot. Like mm. you are an absolute idiot. That is not smart at all, but I'll come with you because I've got nothing else to do. And I've always quite liked the horses. I've always liked the horses. And I was just, I just said, I cannot pick a horse to win, to save my life. And this old guy in the bookies, I'll never forget him. He was the type that'd be like, he'd been there all day, every day. He'd probably spent three pound or something, like just a little bit of his pension money, three pound a day, get him out of the house, keep him busy. Mm. He said, you Mm. need Betfair, young man. It's like, what is Betfair? He said, Betfair enables you to lay horses so you can pick a horse to lose and actually win. And I was like, what? I was like, I'm going to be a millionaire with that. Like, trust me, I can't pick a horse to win a race at all. And 
I went home, I put my student loan into my Betfair account and I started to, to lay horses. Now that seems quite reckless, but always, I've always been very, very methodical with things. I've always just naturally gone, okay, what is the upside? What is the downside? Can I handle the downside? And instead of just like being scattergun and really like gung ho with it, I was like, I'm not going to put all of this money on one horse. I'm going to invest it and I'm going to just do a small portion of it. So I had like 1500 pound in my Betfair account. And I was like, right, I'm just going to do 10 pound, 20 pound, like very small. And let's just be consistent with it. So that's how it came about. And then I've got such an obsessive personality that if I get into something, that's it for me. I'm like in, I will go like a mile deep. I will consume all of the information about that topic. Yeah. So that was it for me. I just got deep into Betfair. I got into the forum. I looked at everything. I started to understand. I, I just had to understand why horses win races and why horses don't win races. I had to get good at this. Yeah. And it turns out that that really worked for me and I got good at it. And then I started to evolved that and look at my own behavior and moved into other sports and um yeah then betfair recognized that as well so um i mean that was very fortunate for me and that's the reason why i didn't really have a proper job because i made a lot of money on betfair uh, but i was always very very aware and i say this every year that you know betfair might not be here next year and then every year it seems to keep going and keep going and keep going I think being aware of that has made me then diversify into my own skill set and other areas. Right. Got you. Okay. Amazing. Uh, so Betfair is still going. It's so do you work for them or what? No, no, no. So I have a community that helps their users get better on Betfair. So I give them the skills that, they don't have to be able to trade better and i give them access to software that saves them time that helps them trade better right got you got you i can't i can't help the picture i have in my head right <laughs> um no the the picture i have in my head when you started explaining the concept and okay it's all kind of brand new to me but i'm a big fan of peaky blinders <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever watched them, yeah. but yeah. So that's the kind of picture I have in my head. <laughs> uh, we can go with that. Like we can go with that. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, and if anybody hasn't seen Peaky Blinders that is listening, do check it out. The full series, apart from the last one, is on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ryan. So, right. Okay. I think I'm up to date um you're now doing what where did you go from there <laughs> wow yeah so that fair trading community it was like 10 years old uh we get into a a lockdown um we won't have to talk about the covid word too much but it happened i was at home and i had a lot of time on my hands because mm. as we know the world stopped i I was always using my computer anyway, and I was always interested in the digital marketing side of things. That is my role in the company of, of Betfair Training Community. I don't run the company. I don't run the operations anymore. I don't run the devs or anything like that. All I do is marketing um, for yeah. that company. And I saw a guy talking about memberships, and he had so many people in a free Facebook group. And what he was actually talking about what he was sharing he said like the comments drove me mad because people were going oh my god this is so much value and i'm i'm thinking he hasn't actually given you any value there's nothing you can take there like the, my filter for that is does it make me more money or does it make me smarter like what you're sharing mm. because that's what i try and do when i talk to other people try and help you make more money and i try and help you make you smart to make you smarter yeah so, this guy just isn't doing this and i thought hey i'm gonna do this like i've got all this time on my hands and i'm gonna do this like, i'm gonna help people with their membership like so i went down the rabbit hole of people who 
don't have a membership, helping them turn their business into a membership, or if they like are a coach or a course seller, how they can then take that and then get recurring revenue from their membership. Turns yeah. out I didn't enjoy helping those people that much. And um, mainly just because they, they just didn't do the work. Um, right. So then that moved into people who already have their membership because I can, like, I can sell, like, I can help you build a business. And if you've already got a business that's doing well, I can really help you take that upper gear just because most of the people that come into the membership world, and we were speaking about this before, they're not marketers. They have a joy or a passion for a skill. It might be like one of my members helps people play the guitar. Another one helps them do their first Ironman. They are not marketers. So yeah. when I help you with your marketing, it's very easy and quick for me to do that. So then I created the membership mastery and it was going to be a large membership. And I was just going to give you all of the information you needed and help you scale. And what I found from that is that I just really like a lot of people came to the weekly coaching call and they loved it. And then they wouldn't They'd just be so busy implementing what they learned from the call that they wouldn't just engage in the forum and other bits. And I'd speak to them and say, why are you not like in the forum? And like, oh my God, Ryan, the call is so good. You gave us so much value on the call. I'm implementing that and I'm just so busy and I'm making so much more money and I've got so many more members that I've just got to speak to them. So then I was like, okay, cool. Wicked. So I'll just do mastermind calls. So I do weekly mastermind calls with people who have a membership. And then that freed me up as well to have a lot more fun and a lot more time. And then I started helping people with SaaS companies or memberships who would come to me and go, Ryan, I'm just so busy. Can you just please write my emails for me? Can you just, can I just outsource some of my marketing to you? I said, yeah, cool. So I, I was like, let's do that then. So they can put me on a monthly retainer. I don't take many clients. I only take fun clients. I only take clients who I think can, I can actually scale their business. Um, and that was that. That's where we got to at, at this point. So that's what I'm, I'm doing now. I do the marketing for Betfair Trading Community. I do the marketing for a couple of other people. And I do masterminds that help people with their, with their membership. So effectively, you've created your own membership then. Yep. By, yeah, by people taking you on a retainer for doing it for them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's very meta, isn't it? I only just recently learned what that word meant. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, meta. I, the only phrase that comes in my head, which I coined when they called that new company that name, I said, meta must do better. <laughs> yes very true <laughs> um anyway so there, there's a term that i came across um a couple of years ago when i was listening to some podcasts in america with cara swisher and another person cara has been in like the technology industry for like the very beginning mm -hmm. And um, her guest, that they now do a joint podcast, but he, he coined this term when he was talking about Netflix and all of these companies that have got these membership fees. Mm -hmm. um, and he called it a rundle. Have you come across that term? No. Rundle. You'll use this now. This is a <laughs> gift for you, Ryan. A rundle, which stands for Recurring Revenue Bundle. Uh, yeah yeah right and that term just stuck with me and i went oh my god this is this is it you know that's how you make money mm -hmm. having a recurring revenue bundle and if you look at the industry whether it's software or whether it's entertainment or i mean one of the things that really gets me and people must be spending hundreds of pounds every month on Netflix, mm -hmm. you know, Disney, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon Prime, uh, you just add them all up. I mean, who's even spending money on BritBox, you know, if mm -hmm. you can afford it. So people are spending 
And I did the calculation and people must be spending in the region of at least £150 a month on all these recurring revenue bundles. Mm. And although they get value from it, they can't use all of it, all of the value that's in it. You know, Mm. they're going to miss so much of it, but they're still paying out each month. Um, But I think there's a, I think just jumping in there, I think there's a real key distinction there. And it's that we choose what we want. So yes, we might not get all the value from all of the shows and we might miss out on some of it, but we choose our own path and the algorithms that these companies use, they show us more of what we like. So I might be really happy with what I get from it and I might watch completely different shows to you, but we're both still happy. True. True. Sorry yeah, to like jump that. in there. That just no, came no, to good, me. No, then. thank you. Thank you. That's a really good point to make. Yeah. And I guess the point that I was making was that there's two, there's two parts to it, isn't it? There is a danger that people will spend money without realizing it's going out of their account each month. Mm-hmm. So the company that's receiving is going, oh, nice. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what we want. But the person then gets a realization saying, oh, my God, I'm spending all this money and I'm not making use of it. I've got to stop it now and get this horrible like feeling that goes, Mm -hmm. oh, let's just cut it out and I'll stop it. And I guess that's the thing that always plays on my mind. Where what does the person who creates them? So here's a question. The person that creates the membership the recurring mm-hmm. revenue bundle, the rundle, how can they make sure that their customer doesn't A, get bored or forget them, you know, mm. that they are, or give up on it? How do mm. they keep going with it that they still feel that they're getting value? That's a great question. That's a really, really good question. And I think this comes from how you build your community, how you build your membership. So from the very start, so if anyone's thinking about building a membership, one of the things that I would, I would think about doing is I would email your list and I would say, what are the five obstacles you have with X or talk to your customers? What are the five obstacles that you have with X? Mm. And when you get the answer to that question and go, okay, well then from those five, which is the one that you really want to tackle? You really want to, you want to get past because then when you've got that, you know what your audience is actually looking for. You know what they want. Then you can actually build a membership that gives value and uh, serves their purpose. Because, and you know, Frank Kern uses this, this saying of, you know, if you're, you're on heaven Island because you've got the answers, you've come, you've come from where your customer is. They're on hell Island. You know, they don't have that result. What are the steps in between that you can do to get them onto Heaven Island? Yeah. And that's the process that I think. So that exact emailing out, finding out about their obstacles, that tells you what they want and then tells you the big obstacles. Then you can lead with the big obstacle. Then if you think about what I just said about Heaven and Hell Island, what are the steps that you need to take your customers on to get to Heaven Island to get the result? Then you just need to do that so then you just build your membership around that so say for example we wanted to teach people to play the guitar you've never played the guitar before in your life so think about all of the obstacles about playing the guitar how do i choose a guitar how do i know which guitar to pick how do i tune the guitar how do i hold the guitar how do i apply the strap do what do i do with the amp by the way i know nothing about guitars this is just no. the questions that are coming to my mind as a beginner yes. Well, then yeah. I just build the content around that. So I just think about what's the first step that I need to do, then the next step, then the next step, then the next step to get me to that result of actually being able to play that guitar. And then you just put that in a membership and then you just put the content out in a way that allows people to do that and go through that. And then you just track what actually happens. So how many people are actually doing your videos? How many people are struggling? And then you look at where they're struggling. You look at the drop off and then you start to give them more support. You start to get better at the support. So you can look at things like, oh, okay. Now 
everybody when they sign up on day three asks me where this video is that they need. Okay, well, maybe it would make sense then to have an autoresponder drop in in day two that really answers that problem. So if you think about the best hotels that you go to, they do this really, really well. Like, and this is how you can onboard all of your customers. You walk into the hotel, my favorite hotel in the world, Kimpton Shorebreak in Huntington Beach. I walk into that hotel and they said, oh, hello, welcome to Kimpton. How was your journey here today? I said, yeah, it's great. We came down the Pacific Coast Highway. Now, what they've done there is find out the emotion of of what I've, have I had a good journey or a bad journey? Because then they can play on that. They can talk to me, they can bring me down or they can take me back up. Then they yeah. start to talk to me about the benefits of the hotel. So we have free coffee every morning, Ryan. To get that, you just go just there. You see where that photo is of the picture of the coffee. That's where the coffee is in the morning. You don't have to do anything. The cups are there. There'll be um, somebody there to serve you your coffee. Okay. Yeah. They've just taken me through all of the scary things about what could happen and they've taken them away and they just told me exactly what to do. And so then you've done that. So now we've got people going through your content. Now we just give them ways to highlight the benefit that they're getting. So talk about, have a weekly wins post, you know, say what wins did you get this week, however small or however big, have a way to graduate people through your content. So when they get to that result what do you do do you give them an award like so now i've just played my first song on the guitar do you what do you do about that do you have a yeah. thread in your community where i'm allowed to then post that i've just done that and napoleon said you can never underestimate man's desire to earn a ribbon and that is so true i have had grown men in their 40s and 50s absolute beasts and giants and hard men, scary men, literally chase after the postman because they miss their delivery of a Betfair Trading Community trophy, which is just like a small trophy. It's plastic, but they didn't, they, they did the work to get that trophy. So if you take away from that, if you think about, okay, I need to find out what people actually want. Okay. That'll help me build a community that gives value that people stick around for. And then think about how do I get them the result? So how do I do that? Do I build video content? Do I go live? Do I do question and answers? What do I do? How can I do this? And then a way of onboarding them. So they feel welcome. They feel safe because yeah. every human being feels misunderstood. So make people feel welcome, make them feel warm and, you know, like they're in the right place. And then a way of tracking that progress or posting so that they can see that they got the value. And then also a way of dropping in to see how they can get help and support if they need it. And a really, really good way of doing this is just a very, very simple email that goes out automatically. Every single human can set this up. So you can go into your emailer and go, okay, Ryan signs up day one. Okay, so wait 20 days, send Ryan an email that just says, hey, Ryan, how are you getting on with your membership? Is there anything that I can help you with? Yeah. That will change your life. And that will keep the value in your community. And it will also give you so much data on what you need to do to make it better. Yeah, I, you're 100% right. I'm no we all want to feel personally valued, don't we? Yep. Um, and then I think I would encompass what you've just said as engagement. It's keep them engaged. Don't forget about them. Don't mm -hmm. think just because they've signed and paid for the membership on a monthly basis or annual basis that they're going to stick with it. You've got to ensure, you've got to keep them warm, I guess, uh, and, and involved. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. And if you think about like the joy with a, a membership is you've made the sale. And if you're in a business where you're then chasing the sale, the next sale, the next sale, the next sale, the next sale with a membership that actually allows you to <laughs> not really chase the next sale. You need to then chase the retain 
like retaining those yes. members because that is the next sale. And we know if somebody's already spent money with you, if they've, you know, got off the sofa, gone upstairs because they were scrolling through their phone, taken their wallet out, checked with the husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, dog, cat, that they are allowed to spend this money to, to go in your membership. Mm. You've just got to serve the absolute hell out of them. And then they will continue to, to, to be in your world. And that, is so much less stressful than chasing the sale. And you yeah. make amazing, amazing relationships, friendships with your members. And then the absolute hidden benefit of all of this, there's two, is you will get an email and it will go something like, oh my God, Ryan, you have changed my life. Which I got this email. A lady called Joe is one of my members. She sent me a message said, Ryan, you've changed my life. You've absolutely changed my life. I signed up with you. And in six weeks, I have made $4,862 more every single month of my life. And they're on recurring. They're going to stick around. My, her membership is for a year. Just, they're going to stick around. And that means so much to me because I have an autistic son and my school fees are $15,000 a year. She's now yeah. just got a third of the way of paying that. That's amazing. So that lights you up. That just keeps, just keeps you going every single day. And what I would recommend to every single human being listening to this is have a praise folder in your Gmail and also have one in Google or Dropbox, whatever you use. Every time you get a testimonial, you see something good about you or your company, take a screenshot of it, save it in that folder. Because on yeah. a bad day, they will light you up. And then the second hidden benefit of this this is going to make you better because if you are teaching other people what you do, oh wow, this keeps you on. This keeps you on it. This keeps you at the top of your game like nothing you've ever seen. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I I, I love it. And so let's have a think. Thank you. That's invaluable advice. And let's have a think about the mechanics because. Mm -hmm it can be really easy to be overwhelmed when you're first starting out. It's a bit like when six years ago, I wanted to start doing podcasting. I went, where do I even start? Mm. Okay. Apple podcasting was the big thing. Then, you know, Spotify wasn't even doing anything. Google wasn't even doing anything, but where do I even start? You know, how can I dumb it down to make it really simple? And I made it really simple for myself, whether it was the equipment that I used, the software that I used, or, you know, I didn't spend a lot of money. I kept it really low. So do you have any advice for how can people that are perhaps haven't got a massive budget, can't spend lots of fees with software mm -hmm. or online stuff? Where, where can people start to make it really simple? Or we can use the big, the big company that, you know, I don't, I don't like it, but it works. And I still use it for my betas. If I'm testing a new product out, Facebook, Facebook <laughs> has one of the best features in groups that there is, you know, they are primed for engagement. Everybody already uses it. And Facebook allows you to have a group. Now in their terms and conditions, it does say something along the lines of, we don't let you have a paid community, but Facebook are testing, taking payments on Facebook for people to be allowed into certain communities. So that's going to change, but I wouldn't worry yeah. about that. I just get cracking, put a Facebook group, make it private. You can go live into a Facebook group. Only the people in the Facebook group are going to get those videos. They also do classes in a Facebook group. So you can actually put your content in a Facebook group. Mm. So really, really straightforward. And they have a really good onboarding process of a group and people already know the software. They already like it. They already use it. So if people are, if your members and people are already using Facebook, just build a Facebook group. You can yeah. put together a very, very simple, if you sign up for Stripe, you can use Stripe for checkouts now. So yes, you can, very, anyone can do this. Anyone can build a Stripe checkout. So if you want to charge 15 pound a month for your membership, sign up for Stripe, boom, there you go. Um, Mr. Ryan, your, that is your link to, to buy my membership. Okay. I put my details in on the thank you page, send me to join the Facebook group. 
Then all you need to do is have a few questions like, what is the email address you use to buy this product? And then a few other things like that. You can come up with whatever questions you want. What do you, yeah. what do you want to get from this group? What is your aim from joining this group? Like from signing up to this membership? And yes. you can also ask, this is a good one to find out that value. What would be your dream scenario for the next 90 days? Like what would be a big win for you in the next 90 days? Then you find that out. Then all you need to do is go through when you says, oh, Ryan has requested to join your Facebook group. Just look at the profile. Okay, that's Ryan. And I use this email address. Okay, that mirrors up with my Stripe. Let them in. It's very, very simple. That keeps it as simple as possible. And then as it grows, then you can start to actually think about fancy software. But yeah, I, if you are just testing this out, if you're just thinking about this, just test it with a Facebook group. That way you will find out if this is actually worth it. So many people spend months and months and months saying to me, oh, I'm building this amazing thing on Kajabi or Kartra, which is $200 a month. They're building yes. really fancy sales pages. It's like, yeah, yeah. you don't need that. Tell your email list that you're thinking about building this. Do they want to get involved in this? If they mm. do, send them the payment link. You will then know if people, even if it's not perfect, if people pay you for that, you've got a great relationship with your list and you also have an offer that's going to work so you can scale that. That is what I would do. I love that. <laughs> and, it, and so let me expand a little bit about, you mentioned Stripe and perhaps not that many people are familiar with it. Maybe people are more familiar with PayPal and which is also an option, of course. But what I like about Stripe, because I've managed to convince my Tycho drumming teacher to use Stripe over PayPal. And what was great about that back end where you can set up subscriptions, mm -hmm. you know, monthly or annually subscriptions inside the software. And okay, you need to master it, a little bit you need to know what you're doing or watch some tutorial videos but once you've done it once that's it it's done mm -hmm. and you just need to create the payment link inside of there and that's the payment link you just give to your you know people that want to sign up mm. um and i've even managed to for him create a i'm going to use some other software which i use for free which is HubSpot, right? I don't pay for HubSpot. And I just put a payment link to the sign-up form. When they click submit, mm -hmm. they go straight to the payment page mm -hmm. and that's where they pay. Yep. And so, yeah. So the only thing you will be paying for if you have a Facebook group and say a HubSpot form um, is the fees to Stripe, which are like, you know, 50p or something, depending on how much you're charging per month yeah. or per year. And it's also worth noting the re reporting that Stripe does. So Stripe mm. has a dashboard when you log in, so you can see how many customers you've got. You can start to see how long they stay. Your monthly recurring revenue, which is a great one. So if you're thinking about doing this, and then every single week you see that monthly recurring revenue going up from your efforts, you're like wow, this is actually something that I should probably put a bit more time and attention into because yeah. I can see it going up like that. And it's really straightforward to use. And you know, if you do struggle with Stripe, you can go into like Fiverr and get somebody to help you out with it for like $8 or something crazy. So yeah, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's great. And it's also, so what I like about stripe as well as it's scalable so when you go in to use other software it just connects seamlessly with things like thrive car and other things so as you're building your business you don't yes. have to worry about oh i'm going to use stripe but in two years when i'm this level i'm going to have to use something else it's like no stripe you're good for life that's an excellent point yeah so you don't have to then transfer everything to some other payment system mm -hmm. a lot of the more expensive software is already set up to be able to connect to Stripe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. That's really fabulous advice. Okay. So are there any other kind of, I mean, you, what, what, in, what 
you said you started this during lockdown. Yep. Right. And, but I, f- I find it incredible. I mean, you did mention that once you get into something, you go a mile deep. So are you a mile deep into this now? Yes, I was, a, I was a mile deep into this after like three weeks of deciding right. I was going to do it. I, I, I went for it. But if you look at like everybody listening, if you, if you think about the journey that that has taken me on, I have pivoted that business many, many times in the two years since we were in lockdown. So it started mm. out as going to be a membership. You know, people were going to pay, I think it, I think I said something like $50 a month because there's a big American audience and you were going to get access to da, 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 da. And then I found that I didn't like that. So I pivoted that and to the, to the bit that I did like, and that was actually easier to find people. And then I pivoted again and again and again. Now, The business is still the same, but I pivoted it. And if you're listening to that and you're thinking about you have this idea for a membership, but you're scared of it failing, I failed many times with that over the last two years. Yes. And I just tweaked it. So it's like, oh, that bit doesn't work or that type of the audience is hard to find. Okay, well, what do I need to do then? Well, okay, I can do that. Okay, well, do I have the time, effort, energy and resources to do that? Grade that. Yes, no. Okay, well. Okay. And do you want to do that? No, I want to serve these people. Okay. Well, I've met these people from this business. I just see it as leveling up all the time. Yeah. It's not failing. It's just moving a rung up that ladder all the time. And that's the key. So many people online see people making 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 grand a month and go, I want to be there, but they're at the top of the ladder. Yeah. You've got to go. You don't climb a ladder straight to the top. You go up one rung. And you get yourself, if you're anything like me as well, I hate ladders. You go one rung up and you get yourself comfortable before you take the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. I look back over the last 10, 12 years and go, that is exactly what I did. I built this business one rung at a time. I go up a rung. Okay, right. I'm safe here. I know what I need to do. Okay, I can go up a rung. Am I confident enough going up a rung? Okay. Yeah. That's, that's it. So if you're, if you're thinking about that, just remember that even in the last two years, that business has changed so much and still is evolving. So just go ahead and get our Facebook group and that Stripe set up and just test it. See what happens. Don't spend six months building a sales page or a, an offer that you don't in fact, I'll just give you my process. Like I so said, my process from start to finish to building out an offer goes exactly like this, okay? I send those questions that I mentioned. So what are the five obstacles you have when it comes to X? And which one of those obstacles is the most important to you or do you most want to tackle and why, okay? I yeah. get that information. I go through that information and then I start to go, okay, there's a great book called The 16 Word, Sa- Word Sales Letter. If you read that book and you've done what I've just given you, if you do this whole process, you'll be incredibly good at marketing. 16 Word Sales Letter is about what's in it for the person that is reading it. There's basically 16, there's 10 questions and it helps you build a sales page. If you've done the step that I've just given you, you'll breeze through the 16 Word Sales Letter. Then what I do from there is I create my offer, create my sales page from that process. I then create a form. You can use tally.so. It's totally free. It's basically type form, but free. It's got so many integrations. Then what I do from there is I record a video of me talking through the sales page, talking through my idea. If you don't want to go on video, don't worry about it. Do audio, do text on the, on the form. Okay. Then I ask specific questions. Okay. So I'm saying, and a real life example of this, I released a new program for a Betfair trading community called BTC Super Trader. And I went through all of the information and then I had a sales page. And my idea was that people, there was three stages of the trade that people didn't understand and they didn't tackle. They all wanted to make money, but they didn't do this. So that's what I was going to teach them. And they were their obstacles. What do I do before I do the trade? What do I do during? What do I do after? I recorded a video of me basically going through this on a sales page saying what the program was going to be. It was beta. And I even told them the price. Okay. Then I asked for their name. 
and you need to ask for these things on the form, the name, the email address. Do you want to buy the product? Yes or no? What feature makes you most want to buy? What feature makes you least want to buy? If I could add one more thing to this that would make it a no-brainer, what would it be? And what questions did you have when reading, listening this, to this? Okay. Then mm. what I do from that, I haven't even built the program at this point, okay? Because I haven't, I'm not going to waste any time on an idea that might not work. Yeah. I sent that to 200 people on my list. I took a small segment. And the reason I took a small segment is I wanted to test it on the small segment before I launched it to everybody. Yeah. 74 people filled that survey and 72 people said, yes, they would buy. Great. I know I've nailed it. But even if you haven't, the data, people will tell you why you haven't, you haven't got that to that point of a yes. Oh, I don't want to buy because da 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 if they haven't said that, you've got their name and email address and the word no. So you can reach out to them and go, look, I'm just trying to find out. I've, I thought I bought, built something that was really cool and you would like, but you said no. Can I just find out why? And then they might tell you a whole multitude of reasons. They'll open up to you. Great. Then you can actually launch that program. So what I did was I said it's going to be limited to 20 people as the first beta because I just want to get 20 people through this to test whether it's right. Okay. So then I did a Facebook group and I went live every single day for two weeks and I taught the super trader system. Okay. Now you can use stream stream yard, which is free to go live into Facebook groups. This is great because you can then download the videos. Now, when you, if you're going to do it like this, don't make the mistake that I made years ago where I answer questions as they come in. Be very structured. Hey guys, welcome to Betfair Trading Community Super Trader. We're on day one. This is all going to be about your first, your mindset, what you need to get right. I'm going to answer questions at the very end of this video. Now, the reason I do that is I want to reuse those videos. So I record that content once instead of going live every day. Oh, hi, Jane. Hi, Ryan. How are you doing? <laughs> mm -mm. You do not want that. Okay. Because no. You want to maximize your time. If this goes well, you don't want to re-record those videos and you bring a different energy live. My energy on this podcast is higher than it would be because I'm live with you than if yeah. I was just recording on my own. So then answer the questions at the end. Okay, now you've got all of your videos and you've also got, I had 20 people that paid me 20 pounds just to go through this. Fantastic. I now have finished that. I then can send a survey and I ask this question. What would you say to people on the fence about joining that fair trading community super trader program? <laughs> One of the testimonials that I got was I have been struggling with trading for years. I feel like I've been trying to create fire with rocks and sticks and you've just handed me the matches. That question is specifically designed to get stories from people because then you go back a step, a couple of steps. Remember I told you about you're asking those, those questions very, very at the start. Then you're building that sales page. Now you have everything you need from the first survey about the obstacles, the second survey about what questions they had, what features they want to actually make them buy, and all of those things. And you've got testimonials from people going, yeah, this is great. You put all of that on a page, that's it. You've now got an offer. You can then send that to the rest of your list and it will convert like crazy. I guarantee it. That is my whole process from start to finish that has made a significant amount of money over my last 10, 11 years online. And you can have that and implement that for free. Thank you. That is very, very kind of you. I really appreciate you sharing that with everybody. That's awesome. <laughs> I bet everybody's going to listen and then just pause and write it down and then pause. That is, you know what? That is my goal. My goal on a podcast when I'm a guest is to make people make more notes from that yeah. podcast episode that I'm on than any other episode ever. Brilliant. I love it. I guarantee you, I will be doing that as well. Oh, brilliant. I've achieved my goal for the day. Yeah, you have. One person for sure is going to be pausing and writing stuff down. Yes. So have no fear. Have no fear. Brilliant, Ryan. I really appreciate it. Um, 
I actually have run out of questions because you've answered everything I wanted to know, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but there is just one more question. How can people get hold of you? Where can they find you, connect with you, join your Facebook group or wherever mm -hmm. they need to go? Yeah, so the I love email. So email me, ryan at themembershipmastery.com and tell me something that you got from this episode or ask me a question if you have an idea about your membership. I will help you. And I'm not going to go, oh, here's a PayPal link, send me some money, then I'll help you. I'll just help you. And yeah. that's the first place. And I'm really active on Twitter as well. I love Twitter. So if you search for Ryan Carruthers, C-A-R-R-U-T-H-E-R-S, you will see a picture of me with headphones on. Just follow me. Send me a DM again. Tell me where you found me. Tell me you listened to this podcast. Tell me what you got from this podcast. Engage with me and see what happens because I guarantee that I will be able to make you more money or make you smarter um, when it comes to memberships or emails. So yeah, they're the best places to get me. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, stay on the line for just a second. Uh, but for now, thank you. Goodbye. And I will definitely follow you on Twitter and look forward to learning more stuff from you on the kind of, you know, on the internet, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Great speaking with you. Take care. Bye for now. Bye-bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe, and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.